So I had no time to get on before. I had no time to set everything up. Just I was just like, okay, there he is. And let me just get in there and just start. <laughs> so welcome. Welcome to be fine. <laughs> so Steve. Yes, sir. Is Staten or Staten? So I always wanted to ask you that. It is Staten. Because a statin is something you take for blood thinning or something like that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, Staten. Very yeah. good. Well, welcome, Steve. Steve, if you guys don't know, uh, he is our vice president of operations. So thank you very much for jumping in the role. We just had a meeting last night. And so Steve's got a lot of stuff he's working on. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Steve, before I, like, you've been, a, you've been a instructor for Phoenix, right? Yes, I uh, still am. I started a new class on Tuesday. Uh, what do you be teach? my 137th class. Wow. Uh, I've been teaching for 14 years. Um, so this will be my 15th year coming up. And, uh, and I have two degrees from U of B. Uh, I have uh, my bachelor's and, uh, in, um, um, in technical uh, in technical information, and then I have my master's, my MBA from University of Phoenix as well, uh, in technology management. So, so is that uh, technology? So we're talking computers, right? Oh yes, yes. Okay, okay. I yeah, I don't. I know enough about computers just to get myself in trouble. So how difficult is it? Is it easier? Is it better online in a virtual environment to to teach that kind of information stuff, or or no? Is it well, I I think that after doing it for so long, I, it's second nature to me. I'm I'm pretty good with it. Uh, the only thing that surprises me is from time to time, the class will change, uh, the format will change, and and some of the subject material will change. So if I if I've got any pre written uh, help help information uh, to share with students, I have to kind of reword that. So there's a lot more work that has to go into it whenever there's a change. Um, but for the most part, most of the time, the classes are pretty consistent. I've never met a student. Uh, I don't even know what they look like. Uh, and it's a good thing. Uh, you know, the diversity and, and inclusion is there because to me, they are student uh, and everybody gets treated equally regardless of, of, of where they come from or what their background is. And so it, it makes it fun for me. I, I enjoy that. I mean, I would like to make face-to-face -face contact, but we just we just don't. <laughs> so that, I mean, that's a good question. So you you just do undergrad, right? Yes, mostly undergrad. Okay. Yes. Okay, because I was wondering. I think in my master's program, I think we're actually going to do some face-to-face -face stuff. I have a feeling we're going to. Like, I'm doing counseling, so I'm, I got a feeling. I think they they probably adjusted based on program, because like I haven't been back to the to Phoenix for like 20 years, and already so much has changed. It's like, oh well, yeah. Night and day. Night and day <laughs> from where it used to be. Um, yes. So that is one thing. The portal's a lot different. Um, I, like I tell people, and I, I think I told you guys last night at the meeting, um, I have to learn the whole mindset of uh, save draft. <laughs> uh, it just yes. doesn't just stay in the window when we're doing stuff. It, you know, you got to save it. It disappears. It's so true. Kind yes. of a so I have drafts saved to the side and I pull them out when I need to. And then, then I go back and double check my grammar and my vocabulary. And, <laughs> and then sometimes I go, why did I write that? Yeah. It <laughs> that makes me. no sense. Yeah. I've got to go. I've got a textbook out in the mailbox that I got to go get. So, um, so, you know, I think about this whole mindset of what you're doing from, you know, teaching as an instructor at Phoenix, and now you're involved on the, on the executive leadership for the Alumni Council, um, but you, you're, you're like, you're, you're a Michigan guy at heart, right? No question about it. <laughs> so, um, what's the difference? I mean, you, you, like, I'm a Buffalo. I tell people, I'll see you. Well, I'll, I'll be seeing you all day. Um, yeah. Tell me the difference between being a, a Michigan alum down to the bone or and, and being a Phoenix alum. Well, I'm not a Michigan alum. Um, I grew up uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. I went to high school there, graduated from a city just outside of uh, Ann Arbor, 
And, um, and you know, just a quick story on how that all evolved. Okay. Uh, my dad used to work for a, a company that's uh, similar to, to Schwann's, uh, if you've ever heard of them, where they go out to people's houses and they deliver food. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this particular company used to deliver um, all kinds of groceries in a little basket. And my dad would run into the customer's homes with the basket with goodies so they could try different things. And then um, he made us sit in the truck. Uh, it didn't want us to mess with the customers. And so while we sat in the truck, he'd leave the radio on. And uh, on football Saturdays was usually when we had to do this. And uh, so it would all start very early in the morning where they would play the Michigan fight song and, uh, and just continue to lead up toward game time. So the whole time we, we'd be sitting there all day long listening to uh, everybody getting excited for the game. And once the game came on, it was, it was just uh, an amazing thing for me. And I had, I grew up with that having never seen a game in person, um, but I was a huge fan. I was a huge fan. Okay. So you're a huge booster. <laughs> Excuse me. It's okay. Yeah. Cut that out. Will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's anything like, uh, like Colorado, I mean, Buffaloes or the Rams, uh, those are the two teams that everybody kind of goes crazy. Like, you know, Doug mm -hmm. was here. Um, so it, I remember I asked you some questions before and you said you, uh, you support um, the marketing arm of two prominent businesses. Yes. Okay, tell me about that. Well, I, I'm, I'm moved into the, I used to be um, a systems administrator, so taking advantage of my degree in technology. Uh, and then I, I felt like I was missing something. So I morphed into uh, project management and doing uh, what we call Six Sigma Black Belt, which is uh, solving strategic level problems for businesses. Um, and through a, a series of layoffs working for both healthcare and the aerospace industry, um, I ended up somehow getting introduced to a new uh, software tool that was in high demand. Uh, and they needed somebody with my background to help administer that system, as well as lend a hand in consulting on uh, you know, strategic level projects. So the, the overall fit of all that together uh, provided me with an opportunity to become a consult consultant uh, so I didn't have to get laid off anymore. Yeah. And uh, so I've been consulting since uh, right uh, after COVID uh, in, in 2020. And uh, I support right now Fortune 500 number one uh, and number 18. So that, that'll give you an idea who they are. Wow. Uh, I don't say the names because, you know, protect the innocent. But uh, I get, I get uh, in, both, in both of the companies, I, I'm uh, supporting their marketing arm of the organization and helping uh, all of these marketers uh, create projects that lead to the ads that you see whenever you walk into a store or whenever you look online. Uh, those ads are a big part of, uh, of what they do. And, uh, and so I support uh, the teams that, that put out all, of, all of that together. Okay, so is it kind of like a data thing in that mindset? Or is it... uh, it's, really, it's, it's really a small version of running projects. For instance, okay. uh, I have a group right now that in 45 days, they have to get something published for uh, the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my job is to help them craft and create the project plan and help them craft uh, how they're going to communicate with each other, how they're going to verify that the work gets done, and, uh, and then they go off and running. So I do a lot of coaching and mentoring uh, of these marketers who don't necessarily have a background in project management, but do understand marketing. And so I kind of help fill in the gaps of, of knowledge with the, with the two things that are hand in hand to get to that finish line of of the ad that you'll see uh, when you look online or walk into a store. Okay. So kids, married, wife, kids, all that good stuff? Oh, yeah. I've been married for 42 years. Uh, but wow. I got married when I was 13. So uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, I've been married for 42 years. No, I, um, I'm, I'm aging well, I like to think. Uh, the army yeah. Me. yeah. Uh, and uh, and I look great I, for, I, a, for a young guy. <laughs> yeah, and I have a boy and a girl. Uh, they're they're uh, actually uh, middle aged now, so I'm uh, getting up okay. there. But uh, but they're both uh, with us right now. Uh, we're helping them uh, achieve some financial success, and so kind of awesome. helping them along temporarily. Uh, and then they'll they'll branch out into their own places to live uh, very soon. But right now we're we're trying to fostering them a, a chance to save a little bit of money. So where was you and your where, where did you and your wife go on your first date? Uh, on our first date, we went to Big Boys. Uh, restaurant, okay. which was, uh, uh, you know, famous for hamburgers. And uh, that was her favorite restaurant. So uh, we went there and uh, I hope people don't laugh too hard, but we went Dutch because um, I didn't have a lot of money. <laughs> 
So, so you so, must uh, invite the ladies in it. <laughs> I, I told her we're going Dutch. And that way, if it's, uh, if, if one of us doesn't enjoy the date, then uh, nobody's out anything. Right. And, okay. and so and that come online seemed to work. Uh, we've been married since. So, <laughs> so that's, there are some, there's some tips for you guys right there. All right. Go Dutch on the other day naughty day. stuff you do. Just say, Hey, babe, let's go out and you're buying you're for you yourself can do that. You and can I'll do buy that. for myself. That, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. I, and I've read somewhere recently that that's a good technique. So I knew it 42 years ago and it worked. So nah, it's amazing. <laughs> I, I tell people all the time, old school courting is always the best school courting. You now I think people are jumping too many, uh, too many, jumping too many steps nowadays, but that's a whole different conversation. So yeah, I wouldn't even know where to begin with online dating. Oh my God. Trust me. After two divorces, I've been trying to kind of figure it out. And I, I'm collecting stand-up comedy material because it's so, funny. No doubt. Yeah, it is no doubt. funny. So let's talk about, well, I'll ask you one last question and I'm going to ask you just a very closing one, but um, what do you want to do? What's your burning desire? Uh, my burning desire is um, as a hobby, uh, and I have a few of them. <laughs> okay. um, uh, I have, I'm, I've been an uh, author of two books and I'm trying to finish up my third one and I'm really, really close and uh, so uh, my short term goal is to uh, finish that book and publish it. Uh, and then my longer term goals, uh, I want to buy a boat one day. Uh, so far, my wife won't let me, uh, but I want a boat. And I want to uh, when I go off into the sunset one day, I'd like to be able to spend all my hobby of, of you know, adding to the boat or or cleaning it or doing whatever's needed, uh, because uh Spending time 24 hours a day with someone you've been married to for 42 years is probably not going to work for us. So I need a hobby. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, yeah, that kind of keeps it going, doesn't it? Yes. And I need uh, and I need this role uh, to give me something else to fill in a few uh, gaps in my time. So, yeah. There you go. So um, any, anything that you want to share with our group, our, 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 our wonderful chapter members before I ask you the final two? Sure. I, I, I've, I've given this some thought and, and there's so many things that I could talk about because I'm I'm very extroverted. Uh, you might find that. I've noticed uh, that about you. I was, I was going to ask you to come out of yourself a little bit more. Yeah, I know it's really hard for me. Uh, I don't need to recharge. I need to go to Las Vegas to recharge because the excitement is what I need to relax. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> so <laughs> people, that, you know, an introvert who sits on the beach watching the waves come in, I, I'm not that. Uh, I got to be in the water. Okay. Um, but, but anyway, my advice to, to fellow alumni is there's been a great effort recently um, to, um, to get into the business of career development for alumni. And I, I'm, for one, am extremely excited about that because, you know, we, we all have, there's a lot of changes in this world with AI and, uh, you know, jobs potentially being lost uh, down the road and, you know, how we market ourselves, how we make ourselves relevant to employers um, is something that's not usually been a part of uh, the degree plan after you finish school. Right. And so to see that UFP is investing in us for, for the life of our careers, I think is a wonderful, uh, is a wonderful thing. And I've been uh, participating in some of the uh, sessions to help uh, shape the model of the career development. And so I'm gonna uh, throw a shout out there that if you have not yet logged back in uh, to UFP, this would be a great ideal. And please join us in an upcoming office hours where we're going to uh, be have a live session and we're going to talk about uh, whatever you'd like to ask us. Uh, and if you've got any career development questions or how to how to go about uh, finding some resources, um, I'll have that available and ready for everybody. Yeah, stay tuned for more of that information. Uh, Steve has a great idea to kind of help us out because you've heard me say it a million times uh, this chapter is going to be what you want it to be uh i don't want to start mandating hey, come make this a job um is something i've loved about university of phoenix from 20 years ago till today is they're there for us you know we we pay a tuition they are great at servicing what we need and so steve has this idea why don't we just do office hours see how we can help people and if we don't have the answer we can go get it and so um, I've been very fortunate to, I was back in uh, the mothership back in October. I've made some great connections from our illustrious president all the way down. So um, use me, I have no problem reaching out to folks. So yes, 
And uh, that uh, office hours will be uh, Wednesday, September, I'm sorry, October 11 uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, and it'll be announced in our uh, through email and through our, our uh, Facebook page. Uh, so please, if you can, come on in and ask away and just feel free to be part of, uh, of the group and make yourself known. Uh, completely, um, there will be no formal uh, agenda. Just come on in and we'll say hello. Yep, there you go. It's like just wide open, but we'll, we'll just be looking out for it. We'll, uh, you'll see a lot of promotion for it. We'll put it out there. So here's my last question for you. So I always try to do a question that just throws people off just because that's the kind of guy I am. So here's the question I found. <laughs> if you could send our president an e emoji right now, what would it be? President of the university. Can't ah. Wait, wait and pop. Um, if you could send Chris Lynn a emoji, what would you send him right now? I would probably send him an emoji that that somehow or another shows excitement and enthusiasm uh, for what's coming. Uh, our ability to support working adults has not changed, uh, and um, and we now have this exciting uh, action coming up with Idaho. Uh, some may be looking upon that a little bit uh, confused, but I will tell you that uh, the mission that the University of Phoenix has is continuing. And, uh, and it's an exciting thing to maybe be able to open ourselves up to an even wider audience. Uh, so I would send him uh, probably an emoji that looks like this. Screenshot of that when I record this. Actually, when I re yeah, edit this. You I'll go ahead. I'm, I'm afraid of what it's going to look like. <laughs> great. So great, great talking to you. Uh, great advice about careers. I, I agree. I've used the... Uh, uh, the, the career uh, center a couple of times myself. I've got a great uh, lady I work with out of, out of Colorado. She's given me some great pointers. Uh, there's a position I'm applying for here. So uh, I, I think it's just a, a great addition. Uh, so definitely talk to us, figure out how to reach out to that stuff. So reach out on Facebook, link to, uh, the uh, little LinkedIn or the messenger. We'll get to you. So Steve, I appreciate you taking the time to be with me today, man. Well, I appreciate you having me, Marty, and I appreciate being a partner in what we're trying to, to do here uh, for the state of Oregon. I think it's exciting. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Not a problem, man. I will see you on the 26th. Yes, you will. Okay. All right, take care. Bye. All right, bye. Bye. Came back to the city with my bank account on F. Giving rappers, I know they happy that I left. Hit the South in winter, I just put down my deposit. Two degrees, I left that jacket in my car. Bill, I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup. I